is your boy Greg here with another installment of the Beer Flow Podcast. Welcome back. How's everyone doing? First off, we do want to say thank you so much for the love and support. Um, we see it. Thank you so much. Um, if you're new to the podcast, welcome. Uh, one of the things we like to convey here at the Beer Flow Podcast is that we're helpers. We're here to help you. On behalf of myself, Greg, Real Deal in the back, Einstein in the back, thank you so much. All right, so let's get into it. Now, today's subject is something that's, I don't want to say controversial, but it is definitely something that's up for debate lots and lots of times, and it usually comes up once a year. Um, I got a cousin, and he, uh, you know, he's he's actually one of the members of the council, my hip hop council that I go to when I have hip hop questions or uh, things I want to, you know, kind of discuss hip from a hip hop standpoint. And he he's a big he's a big beer lover, and he's definitely a big supporter of the Beer Flow podcast. And I remember he, he posted recently. He recently he posted posted something on uh, social media, something about beer and something about something to the effect of, you know, what's the best pumpkin ale? And he said the one that just easily goes down the sink. Ugh. So here we are. This is the Beer Flow Podcast Pumpkin Beer episode. Now, for those of you who aren't into pumpkin beers, I get it. I totally get it. There is just this crazy oversaturation of pumpkin spice, pumpkin this, pumpkin everywhere. I get it. It's It drives me nuts, too. But in all honesty, I, I, I'm not going to lie. There is a very short or very small window, I should say, that I actually look forward to it, and by and large, I'm not a big fan of, like, pumpkin spice pretty much anything. I mean, yes, I'll have your your occasional pumpkin bread, uh, you know, come holiday time, pumpkin loaf, or I'm sorry, pumpkin pie, and yeah, yeah, I, I mean, I get it, you know, for those of you that actually are in an area that actually grows you know, pumpkins, things like that. It's everywhere. And so it's it's a bounty, it's a harvest. And, you know, this time of year, it is the harvest season. I get that. They have harvest ales. So by all means, please partake in those. You know, your richer, maltier beers. I get it. But come on. You got to show a little love to the pumpkin ales. So, okay. So what is it? Yeah, like I just said, it's an ale. So... How do you, you know, in a real quick, easy term, how do you make pumpkin beer? What, what, what makes a difference? How does it, yeah, there are flavoring extracts that some companies use and, but for the most part, it's, uh, during the brewing process, you get pumpkin flesh and that's mixed in with the malts. And what happens is when it starts, uh, during the mash process, uh, the beer will actually take on the sugars and it will naturally sweeten your beer. And yes, it will take on those pumpkin characteristics. Now what happens after that is pretty much up to the brewer as far as what kind of spices they put in there and what they, what they do to doctor it up to give it its own unique flavor. So that that's pretty much it. And, you know, I get it. There are people that are, kind of standoffish they're they're not going to try it because there has been this just crazy shove down your throat pumpkin everything so you know for somebody who's starting to get into craft beer um it may be something that just they're they're turned off by and i totally understand that with pumpkin and pumpkin pumpkin beers i will tell you tread lightly because What's the overall, you know, what's the overall outcome of it? What's it going to, you know, is it going to taste like pumpkin? Yes. For the most part, yes, it's going to taste like pumpkin. It's going to, you know, it's going to taste like pumpkin pie. It's going to have those spices. 
what spices, the spices you find in pumpkin pie, you know, literally cinnamon, nutmeg, uh, roasty malt, brown sugars, clove. Those are, those are the flavor characteristics that are in pumpkin pie that you're going to find in most of these pumpkin ales. Now, there are some breweries that for the most part use that, uh, I guess that basic, I don't want to say basic, but I mean that pretty much that recipe, but what they do to it and how they use it, that's going to differentiate themselves between everyone else that makes a pumpkin beer. Now, I can't stress enough. I understand this isn't for everyone. But for those of you who are into it, this is for you. All right. So let's, for one, okay. So for one, pumpkin ales, strictly American, absolutely American. There there aren't any Germans. And, and what's crazy too is like during this time of year, you know, you have your autumn releases, your fall releases, your Oktoberfest. And what started sneaking in a little bit more and more, I'd say probably over the past 10 years, eight years, some, some, somewhere around there, you started seeing more and more breweries making pumpkin ales, pumpkin beers. And that's fine. But let's, let's, not, let's not get it twisted and let's not forget that it was the smaller guys, the craft brewers that started it, that they're the ones. I, I couldn't do the actual tracing, the lineage of who started it first you do that and email us and you let us know if if you do your sleuth and you do your homework and you find out you let us know please we will be sure to give you a shout out and we will give you all the credit for finding out who the first brewery uh which which, which was the first brewery to make a pumpkin ale and by all means you have that credit thank you please bring it to us we'd love it but okay so Let's get into some more of the actual beers themselves. Now, it is a limited run. So if you're into it, if you want to try a couple, please, by all means, do. They're not going to be here forever. And for the most part, you're really only going to see them um, from about September until maybe around Thanksgiving. I know I'm I'm more than willing to bet that, you know, the production of them have, have definitely have stopped by then. But you're still going to see some. You may see. You may still see some on shelves, uh, kind of lurking around. If it's from a brewery you trust, you've got a, a local craft brewery, a gastro pub that doesn't. By all means, please try it. Um, I'm not going to say try four or five at once, but you know that that's up to you. you by all means, knock yourself out. I'm, we're helpers. We're not here to judge. You do what you got to do. I personally, I, I I can only take a, a my fair share limited run of pumpkin ales. So for me, my I would have to say probably my favorite 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 pumpkin ale is it's made by Dogfish Head. It's the pumpkin ale, uh, and it's spelled P U N K I N. So, um. In a previous episode, uh, probably one of the first ones, I know I'd mentioned there was a documentary called Beer Wars and talked about kind of the craft beer versus the big breweries. And pumpkin ales are a really, really big shining example of that. And in that documentary, they actually mentioned uh, pumpkin and why they charge so much for only four bottles. And, you know, the the owner of Dogfish Head, he's... You know, he made a declarative statement about, like, look, I know how much it actually costs to put actual pumpkin in the beer and how much it, how much money it goes into production of that. Whereas you get like a big macro brewery that may not use actual pumpkin. They may just use flavoring extract. So that's why they're able to keep their costs low and, you know, whatever. I mean... For me personally, I'm going to go with the craft brew because for one, it's, it's one of those things you you know you're probably going to get a better product because of the quality of the ingredients that are going into that beer to be, you know, to be consumed. Um, you're going to get more natural flavor profiles from those. So, I mean, like I said, we're helpers. Please, I would encourage you to 
go wherever you trust, uh, wherever a trustworthy beer venue, like I said, a local restaurant you know that does uh, their own beers, some craft brewery, some nano brewery, some gastro pub, whatever, wherever you go. And if they've got a pumpkin, knock yourself out. Try it out. But yeah, for me personally, like I said, Dogfish Head, that is probably hands down my favorite one. I look forward to it every year, uh, mainly because they don't beat you. Over, th- th- that one does not beat you over the head with pumpkin, like really like shoving that pumpkin pie flavor taste down your throat. It tastes like a really, really great craft beer that's got a nice, decent hint of pumpkin in it. And really, that's all I want. If I'm going to get a pumpkin ale, I just, you know, I don't need to be beaten over the head because I'm going to be beaten over the head with pumpkin spice everything. And so in my beer, I get it. For those of you that are purists and you don't want that in your beer, I totally get that. But if you are a purist, I I highly recommend if you get a chance, please try, if find one first at this point. I mean, for one, I feel like I let you down a little bit. I mean... For the past week, I've been searching high and low in my little neck of the woods. I've got one more spot. I can hopefully get some uh, tomorrow. But, like, as it stands for the past five days in my area of the woods in Central Valley, California, no, nobody has the dogfish head, you know, pumpkin ale. And what sucks is I know I saw it earlier. It could have easily been two weeks ago. But now it's gone. So there. See, all you purists that are just, oh, you know, that's for hipsters and it sucks. Well, really? It sucks? That's why it's gone? I mean, I get it. There's a novelty to it. But, you know, all right, whatever. There, There's there's my rant. I'm done ranting about that. <sighs> all right. What I've also done is I've also compiled a small list, small list of what I think are some really good standout uh, pumpkin beers. Now, like I said, I know that uh, there are some uh, macros that are making pumpkins, whatever. Um, These are some really great craft beer, pumpkin ales, pumpkin beer. So I would say for the most part, uh, half of this list is national. So if you get a chance, you see them on the shelf. And if you want to tiptoe into the waters of the pumpkin ale, by all means, I think these are great ones to go to. Um, one of the first ones I really recommend, it's uh, from Portland, Maine. It's from Shipyard Brewing, the Pumpkinhead Ale. For one, it's got, a, it's got a great bottle. It's got literally like the kind of Ichabod Crane, you know, Headless Horseman, Pumpkinhead. It's a whatever. It's a cool label, but the beer itself is really, really good. It's, uh, it's I don't want to say dry, but I mean, it's definitely got more of a ale a, a beer taste more than a pumpkin it's really 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 subtle um i do remember it being a little bit more spicy um not so much like clovey nutmeggy but you, you definitely get that but there's a little bit uh i don't want to say pepperness to it but it's it's not super sweet spicy so definitely worth checking out uh shipyards pumpkin head ale um a go-to every year they are solid. I, I I cannot front. I cannot front. They are absolutely solid. Um, and this year they've got one. It's, I, I don't, maybe they're just bringing more adjectives and more descriptions to the forefront of their packaging and the marketing of it. But, I mean, it worked. It, it caught my attention. I noticed the name change. It's the uh, Sam Adams 20 Pounds of Pumpkin. Um, uh, according to the label, they use approximately 20 pounds of pumpkin literally per barrel. So definitely worth checking out. Uh, I haven't been let down by the Sam Adams pumpkin. Uh, you can get them individually in six packs. Um, I don't know if they have 12 packs, but usually in their uh, fall releases, that will be one that's mixed in with in their variety pack. So if you have a you know Costco accessibility, usually they have the variety packs there at Costco definitely worth checking out that's one of the ones that i think is a really good go-to tiptoeing your way or just overall just a really great pumpkin spice ale so check that one out um now there's one that 
I don't know what's going on with this brewery, but it literally seems like there's a new beer they're releasing every week, and they're great. Um, the one thing I've really noticed about um, it's uh, Belching Belching Beaver out of SoCal. Um, they really do stouts and uh, porters. They're, they're really good. I mean, there are other stuff. They do some IPAs. Of, I've seen like a peanut butter one, but I just recently I had it last week. It was their uh, the Belgian Beaver Pumpkin Spice Milk Stout. Man, that thing was actually really, really good. I, I almost wish I could have saved a bottle, um, but come on. Who, who are we kidding here? It was everything I like. I personally, I love milk stouts. Uh, and this one, the the Belgian Beaver Pumpkin Spice, it did not disappoint. It's, you know, it was, it's got that really cool, like super dark, just, uh, you know, dark color to it. When you pour it, uh, everything you look for in the milk stout, nice and creamy. It's sweet. Yeah, there was pumpkin in there and there's a good amount of it. But that creaminess of uh, the lactose they make to make it a milk stout, God, it just really smoothed it out. Definitely worth checking out. Uh, I can assume if I'm getting it up here in Northern California, it's got to be available to you down south. And I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly how far their distri- distribution goes out east. But if you get a chance, definitely worth checking out uh, the Belgian Beaver Pumpkin Spice Milk Stout, and. Lastly, but not leastly, now, I don't know, I have been. I was trying to look online, and outside of going to the actual tap room, uh, not so long ago, Einstein and I, we went to Speakeasy, and man, they're, in their tap room, they had the uh, Payback Porter, the Pumpkin Pie, it's the Payback Porter Pumpkin Pie, holy crap, that thing was fantastic oh my god it's so good and see this is really why i'm encouraging everyone to go to their local breweries that they like uh because it was for that particular beer it was only available on tap in the tap room good god that thing was really really good definitely kind of chill sipper but that i mean for me that's local so whatever you got available to you, please, please, I encourage you, check it out. See who's got what. Do not be afraid. If you don't like pumpkin, then don't drink it. No sweat off my nose. But if if you're even thinking of trying it, trust your local. It's going to be fresh. The fresher, the better. And these just these are just recommendations. They're help. We're helpers here. Take what you like. Whew. See, I do that because I was going to take a breath, but I'm also thinking about all the different beers, and it's a lot to take in. I get it. It's a lot to take in. All right. 15 for 12 coming right up. All right. Here we go. 15 for 12, the pumpkin edition. And normally at this time, I... I will physically crack open a beer while the mic is on for ambiance reasons, for, you know, nice background noise. But I'm not going to lie. I I opened this beer at the beginning of this uh, recording of this podcast. And i got to tell you, this thing is great. Uh, so that's why you don't hear that fun sound. But... For this week's 15 for 12, and in this particular case, it is a 15 for 22. It is by our friends over at Elysian. Now, I know, I know, some of you guys, why are you saying Elysian? You know, you know, who cares? Okay, I got a little inside scoop about them. Shut up. Elysian still makes great, great beer. If you're in Seattle, you get a chance Please check them out. They do great stuff. And now, now that they're being distributed throughout the country, please check them out. They're so, they just do great stuff. And this falls into that category. This is the Elysian, the Great Pumpkin Imperial Pumpkin Ale. Imperial? Why do you say? Why do they say Imperial? Well, I'm going to tell you. 
a lot of these pumpkin ales, they're going to range in ABV between about, I'd say about mid to low fives to maybe about a mid seven. But oh no, oh no. This one, the Imperial Pumpkin Ale, it is a nice, healthy 8.8 ABV. Yes, so that's why I didn't want to chug this one right away. But, all right, so in the glass, uh, like most of the pumpkin pumpkin ales, they're going to be fairly darker golden. This one is an even more dark, uh, I want to say dark gold. Uh, think, of, oh, think of like farmer's market honey. So, you know, when you go to a farmer's market, they have this, they'll have usually have a couple different local honeys, and there's that one that's a little darker. This is about the same color as that. Uh, all right. So, okay, on the nose, nutmeggy, cinnamony, goodness. Sweet dessert, think pumpkin pie. Yeah, it's, it's there. And see, okay. So what I do like about this one a lot, I, I mean, it's a great beer. I'm, I, I do like it, but one of the one of the nice characteristics of this one in particular is that it has like a, a tartness to it. Um, I don't want to go as far as say bitterness. I mean, it's a little bitter, like maybe from you know from a hop or something, but it, it's got a nice little tart uh, background to it. Kind of gets you on the side of the tongue. It, it's really good. But yes, it is going to have that pumpkin ale, pumpkin pie type, you know, the what you look for in a pumpkin ale. It's, it's going to taste a little bit like pumpkin pie. Um, it's actually a little uh, spicy too. Not like, not. I mean, yes, like, you know, sweet spices, like, but it's also got like almost a heat component to it. A little, you know, a little spicy kick. It is good, though. It is really good. I think this would be a great one if you wanted to share with somebody. You know, oh, I want to try a pumpkin. I want to try a pumpkin. There you go. Split a 22. You're good. For the second beer, for 15 for 12, this, and I will say, this holds a near and dear and special place in my heart. Okay, so the reason being this is a special beer is because this is the wifey's favorite pumpkin beer she doesn't drink a lot of pumpkin pumpkin ales but she does love this one wifey's favorite pumpkin ale is from the bay area from hayward california buffalo bills pump it's actually called it was buffalo bills brewery out of hayward california this is their pumpkin ale and they toted it as america's original so like I said, by all means, please let us know. You be the helpers this time. And in the glass it goes, this one is way darker. This is super, super, super dark. Uh, this almost looks like a almost like a stout. More takes on more of like that porter, porter dark look. So this one is a little less sweet. Um, but with, with like the Elysian, it was sweet also because it was, it was warm. It was a hot beer as far as like, uh, ABV goes. This one is a relatively easy 6% ABV. Um, this one is sweet too, but I get more of the, uh, clove spice than anything, not super cinnamony, if that's a word, um, but this one is really good. This one is a lot easier to drink. And I probably should have started off with this one. I don't. I know I didn't blow my palate, but this one's definitely going to be a little bit easier to drink because, you know, the Elysian, got a, you know, it's an 8% ABV. This one's a 6, so it's lower. This is definitely a little bit more drinkable if you're not used to, you know, higher ABV beers or... Let's face it, if you're just not used to pumpkin ales in general, this is probably going to be a very easy go-to. And it's actually, to be honest, it could be a reason why it's the wifey's favorite. So there you go. And there we go. 
We did it. Hooray. Another installment of the beer flow in the books. Hope you guys enjoyed it. It was definitely our pleasure. We love having you guys. We love to support. Please, once again, feel free to go to iTunes. Look up that rating. Give us as many stars as you think we deserve. That's it. Thank you so much. On behalf of myself, Greg, Real Deal, Einstein, we love you guys so much. Thank you for the support. This week's Beer Flow Jam of the Week, keeping it Halloween themed. And the reason why I say Halloween is because, let's face it, when this album came out, well, in general, when this group came out, they kind of scared the shit out of everybody. Um, for one, they weren't from the East Coast. They weren't from the West Coast. They were from the South. They were from the South before there was a dirty South in the hip-hop game. Their album cover was crazy. Uh, this definitely pre woo This is from 1991. Uh, but I don't know who it is. The story behind the album cover is even way more nuts. It's way more Halloween themed. You know, you got Willie D. You got Scarface. Yeah, that Scarface. And Bushwick Bill. And on the album cover, they show those three guys in the hospital. And Bushwick Bill has his eyeball blown out. And that's the album cover. And it was genuinely a real picture of Bushwick Bill and his eyeball pretty much gone and blood. Oh, man. It was crazy. It was scary. That album was called We Can't Be Stopped. And this week's Beer Flow Jam of the Week, just in time for the Halloween season, my mind playing tricks on me by the Ghetto Boys. Please. Yeah, it's crazy. It's scary. It's fun. It is. It's that album is literally like listening to a horror film. No, it's not for the kids. Do not play that for the kids. I'm telling you, don't play that for the kids. But it is this week's Beer Flow Jam of the Week. Please enjoy my mind playing tricks on me by the Ghetto Boys. And remember our motto here at the Beer Flow. We do not do pumpkin spice lattes, but we will do a pumpkin ale. It's your boy Greg signing off. Peace. My mind is playing tricks on me.